this year. Free albums, free albums. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> free Remember files. that? Free what? Free digital files. Free, yeah, that's right, free digital files. And that was Friday's, right? That's right, Friday was music day. Uh, stacks of LPs. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good, what are you doing? Uh, same old, same old. Trying to make a living in music. Yeah. It's, uh, boy, what a different industry from uh, when you, you and I met several decades ago. Yeah, absolutely. You're with the Harris Institute, who ranked uh, the best in Canada. This is just a, a, an incredible place to go and study for those people who are into, well, so, so many different aspects of, of uh, the music industry, moving, moving all these sheets of paper around here. Audio production, no, no, more, di no more discs, so the vinyl is coming back. It's bizarre as that Well, it's only seem. because they're making it again. Yeah. For years, you couldn't buy it. Now they're actually making records again, and people didn't stop buying it, but you couldn't because they didn't make them. But people say that, uh, that the quality of sound on, a vinyl, um, you know, on vinyl is better than digital. I like it, personally. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I have a hard time listening to digital files after an hour or two. I, I just find my ears get sore. But I can go back and put on the phones and listen to vinyl. Mm -hmm. I still prefer it. If it's I the can. warmth of analog. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely for me. It, well, in addition to the audio production program, there's an arts management program, something that you would uh, know. You've uh, that's I chair that. I oversee that. That's side of the that's school. your baby. Yeah, because you worked with Gowan, Rick Emmett, Sticks, a few. Juno Awards. Yeah, one or two. How did you all? How did this all begin? This career for you? Uh, I went. Uh, I was a kid who collected records in high school and was the guy that did the high school dances back when high schools actually had dances. And I went away to McMaster University. They don't have them anymore? <laughs> I guess they do, but they're usually sort of video, uh, yeah, video <laughs> DJ things. Uh, I went away to McMaster to study geography and found out that they actually had a radio station there. And lo and behold, my classes failed in geography. And I started doing the shows and the concerts. And that led to me going to work with a legendary Canadian band called Crowbar. Yeah. As the tour manager. Yeah, when I was at school, 70s? I. Uh, early 70s yeah, it was 71, 72. Yeah, okay. oh, when what, I was at school, oh, what a feeling. One, of the, one of the vehicles I first purchased was an old Bell telephone truck. And lo and behold, to me, yeah, a big van with racks on the top, and all the musicians in Hamilton befriended me. I, I thought it was my lovely personality, but it, they realized I owned a truck, and I could lug their gear around. <laughs> well, you're, you're, now invited, you're now invited to come back anytime since we're owned by Bell now. Yes, there you go. <laughs> bring your truck. <laughs> Full circle. Bring, right. Yeah, bring your, right. your truck back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the, the aspect of uh, arts management program. Yeah. How much different is, is managing artists now than it was 20, 30 years ago? Because the reasoning behind touring has changed from what it was at one point. It used to all be, be about supporting the record, and now the record is supporting the tour. I actually said this in class this week. When I first got into the business, we, when I worked with bands, we went into studios literally overnight with no money and made really cheap records. And we had no record companies, so we literally got in the truck and we went out and we played live shows. And if we happened to sell records, that's it. Here we are for a circle. Having gone through 20, 30 years of doing nothing but trying to get signed to a record company and get big deals, mm -hmm. now independent artists are back doing that. They make their they living on the road and did originally. Yeah. You make records and you go and you find an audience and build an audience. So how, does that mean that the management is, is more or less important? I it think it's more important now. Um, the fact is we are marketers, managers are marketers, they are bankers, um, facilitators. Uh, we're trying to put as much of a team together as we possibly can so that when the artist actually walks on stage, hopefully they don't have to think about anything else other than doing the best possible performance they can do. Right, and, and so how long is this, is this course? The, the school itself is we're going into our 25th year, and if a student comes to the school, it's a one-year program. So what would you teach, for example, if I signed up for the arts management program, what would be some of the courses that I would take? Well, you're going to take somewhere between 55 and 60 different courses over the three semesters. That includes artist management, it includes marketing, it includes internet building websites, it includes live touring, live sound, <coughs> excuse me, all the things that an artist will need to mm -hmm. run a business. Um, our instructors, none of us are full-time. We have 64. Bill King is about to become number 65. Um, none of us work there full-time. We come in an hour or two. We share our area of expertise. So students are hearing it from people who are 
actually doing on a daily basis. And so now you're dealing with things like uh, social uh, social media when you're out Absolutely. there promoting a band or Absolutely. promoting a singer that didn't exist 15 years ago. Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't that many years ago we had a Xerox machine and we were sending out fan things with stamps on envelopes. Uh, <laughs> and now I, a know, Xerox machine. Yeah. Remember, that? remember that? I remember uh, the Gestetner, Gestetner machine. machine with your purple <laughs> but it, fingers. Yeah, but it had yeah. that great smell to it though. Yeah. I think I got addicted to that one year in school. <laughs> oh, I love that Gestetner smell. So the, the, the main focus here is we like to call it project driven. Uh, by the time the students in the arts manage, and it's the same thing for the audio production, they have three major projects. Um, one project is together with two or three other students. They're going to form a legitimate artist management company. In the last eight months of school, they have to go out on the streets. They have to find themselves an artist, negotiate and deal idea. with a contract, and they actually manage an act for eight months. Getting them gigs, putting together the websites. You know what? If I think if, if people knew that, my son plays in, in, in a band, and I don't think he knows about that. I mean, so these these young students really would be available for these young bands Absolutely. starting off. Absolutely. That's the hard part right there. That is the hardest part. Getting somebody to do the, the, the field work, to get out there, knock yeah. on doors and do that. We were talking about it the other day when we went to school. Uh, the fact that I was saying to the kids, partner up. Make this a community because, you know, you look at things like Facebook. Facebook came about because one guy had a business vision, another guy had a creative, and they all come together and worked, and they're young people who work together and create new things in this new era of technology. Well, the biggest perception is, and one of our hardest things at the school, is, is convincing parents, who literally do a lot of the, the payment of it, that there is a legitimate music industry out there. I mean, every day on the media, God bless it, newspapers, magazines, internet, the music business is dying. It's over. Records aren't something. It's not the music business that's in trouble. It's the record business. There's more music being recorded and mm -hmm. played and performed than there ever has in the history of the planet. And musicians tend to be left brain, right brain. They tend to be creative. They hate doing business. Yeah. So you need people to help you do your business. Most artists that we look at, Celine Dion, probably has 400 people working on her team. Uh, all solo yeah. artists need a team. So my job is, with the students, is to make them understand that this is a team process to help the musicians achieve the dreams of what they want to do. Now, you're saying there's 400 people that work with it. This isn't, you don't want to mislead people into thinking that this is uh, their, their, their entourage. This is not an entourage. No, no. These, aren't hang, these aren't hanger-ons. There's a producer, yeah, there's a on. manager, there's an engineer, there's a studio owner, there are musicians, there are songwriters, there are publishers, there are internet people. You, musicians can't do it all themselves. How many hours in the day? I, uh, one, of, one of the artists that I, I love to use as a case study is Lorena McKinnon. Uh, yeah, a Celtic harp player who sold 18 million records. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, On her own. Uh, on her own. But she has a number of people that she brings in to do certain things. She can't do it all herself. And she once had an interview where somebody asked her, how much of your day is spent doing business? How much of your yeah. day is doing spent doing creative? And she said, about 85% of my day is spent doing business. And I thought, how good could she be if she spent 85% <clears throat> of her time being creative? Right. <laughs> so yeah. the process of us trying to teach is that. She walked in to CIUT in 1986 when I was there, and she came in with, a bag full of cassettes, which she nobody knew who she was. Sold at the St. Lawrence she Market. She sold at the market for ten dollars, and then eventually Warner signed. I think. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. going to be coming back to that conversation and more. Bob Roper is our guest in studio right now. It's one forty-five. News Talk ten ten. Time saver traffic. <laughs>